Hey everyone, so I have been living in the Philippines now for 10 months since February of this year, 2022. Now, both in America and here in the Philippines, I've only ever lived out in the country and in the province. So my perspective isn't that of someone spending much time engaging in city life. And these are some of the differences that I have personally observed during my time here so far. And this is by no means a complete list. Some of them are small differences, some of them are bigger. And stick around for number eight because it's kind of weird and I want your opinion on it. I wanna know if I'm the only one to observe this or if other people have seen it as well. At number one, we have Sari Sari stores. So I'm using Sari Sari stores in this example, but I could just as easily say carandarias or street food stalls. Sari Sari in English means variety. So a Sari Sari store is a variety store. And people may try to compare Sari Sari stores with uh, country stores or corner stores in America, but I see them as culturally different things. For one, it feels like there's a Sari Sari store anywhere you go in the Philippines. Uh, wherever you live, there's probably a Sari Sari store within a very close walking distance to wherever you live. And that's whether you live in the city or in the province. Contrast that to America though, where you might live in a place where there's literally nothing, you know, gas station store, there's nothing for miles and miles. It's also very common to see Saudi Saudi stores run out of the owner's house, which isn't something you would typically see in America. So Saudi Saudi stores and country stores both help to foster a sense of local community. However, I think the cultural footprint of country stores or corner stores in America is much smaller compared to that of Saudi Saudi stores in the Philippines. They're less culturally significant, I would say. Unfortunately, America is a much more corporate country than the Philippines, and it's often either very difficult or impossible to do all of your shopping locally. And don't get me wrong, I do love American country stores. They're just not as culturally significant, not as American as Saudi Saudi stores are Filipino. Okay, so moving on to number two, which is spoon in the right hand. One of the first things that Elaine taught me when I first arrived here in the Philippines was the Filipino way to eat, which is spoon in the right hand, fork in the left hand. The spoon is the main eating utensil. The only purpose of the fork is to transfer food from your plate to the spoon. This is in contrast to the American tradition of the fork being the primary eating utensil. And I attribute this to the fact that Filipinos eat so much rice, probably more rice than is healthy for a person, to be honest. When you eat so much rice with literally everything, uh, it's very convenient to have a utensil that just serves as a shovel, basically. Eating with your hands is also uh, very common in the Philippines, which is considered rude in America, so that's another difference. Okay, at number three, we have drinks in plastic bags. So in the Philippines, there's lots of little places to buy drinks, like carinderias or out of street food stalls. They sell different drinks, like gulaman is my personal favorite. I think I'm saying that right. It's like a brown sugar drink with uh, little jellies in it. It's really good. There's also melon juice and pineapple juice and various juices you can buy. And when you order a glass of one of these drinks, you would be surprised if you didn't know beforehand to see them pour your drink into a plastic baggie. In America, if someone poured your drink into a plastic bag, you'd think you're on a prank show of some kind. And I actually have seen a prank video, an American prank video, of someone giving a customer their drink in a plastic bag as a prank. But in the Philippines, that's just normal. Number four is that Filipino haircuts are actually good. So in America, it's very common to go to a barber and show them a picture of a haircut that you want and then receive something different than what you asked for. In America, I have to go to a Dominican barber shop and pay $25 for a haircut that even comes close to the level of quality of the $1 haircut that I get just down the street here in the Philippines. And honestly, the fact that it's so difficult to get a good haircut in America is disappointing, so good job to the Philippines on this one. Number five is Filipino hospitality is real. So you probably saw this one coming. It's one of the traits of Filipino culture that foreigners often point out. Filipino people are typically very hospitable. I love this trait about Filipino people, but it makes me sad at the same time because I wish the level of hospitality that I experience here in the Philippines, I wish I could experience that in America as well. 
There is such a thing as American hospitality, but it's a slowly dying trait, and the hospitality that you do experience in America is often inconsistent. I have never experienced consistent kindness like I do here in the Philippines. It's really amazing. Filipino hospitality is a real thing, and I hope you guys never lose that trait. Okay, number six is Filipinos enjoy karaoke maybe a little too much. But I won't last a day without you. So it is not at all uncommon to hear people singing karaoke deep into the night. Karaoke is such a culturally Filipino thing that the government actually regulates uh, how late into the night you're actually able to sing. I think the cutoff here in Dingalan is around 10 p.m. As an American, karaoke is something that I had zero experience with coming into the Philippines and I've learned to love it. It's a really fun way to socialize and entertain guests. So it's, karaoke is something that Elaine and I are definitely going to be importing to America and our household once we uh, go back to America. Number seven is Filipinos travel in large groups. In America, if I were to go on a trip or a vacation, say from North Carolina where I live to the Northeast where I'm from, I would probably go either by myself or with one to two friends tops. In my experience, I don't see a lot of Americans traveling in large groups. Filipinos, on the other hand, love to travel in large groups. It seems like whenever Filipinos go on vacation, the idea, the default is to invite as many people as possible. I believe the reasons for this are, uh, one, it reduces the cost of the vacation because when you're splitting the cost up, uh, amongst a bunch of people, then it's a lot cheaper than if all of that cost were shouldered by one person. And the other, re the other reason is I think Filipinos genuinely enjoy the company of others more so than Americans do. And this is one of the differences where I lean more towards the American side because I'm very much an introvert and I enjoy peace and quiet and a vacation with a whole bunch of people doesn't sound like a vacation to me. Okay, number eight. So this is the weird one that I mentioned earlier, and that is Filipinos don't mind stuff getting wet. So I wasn't sure if I should include this one or not because it's just such an oddball observation, and but it's a legitimate observation, so I figured I have to include it. In America, whenever something gets wet, you clean it right away, no matter what it is. If it's the countertop, uh, the bathroom floor, the kitchen floor, your shirt, anything. You, you wanna dry it off and clean it. I've just found that Filipinos seem to be much more tolerant of water in the house. Uh, Filipino bathrooms are a good example of this because most Filipino bathrooms, if not all Filipino bathrooms, have a drain in the bathroom on the floor. So that means the entire bathroom is designed to get wet. Whereas American bathrooms, usually there's just a bathtub or a shower area with a drain and a sink. And those are the only two areas that are designed to get wet. The floor is to stay dry, everything should stay dry except for those two spots. It sounds like a small thing, but it's, it's big enough of a thing for me to notice. It's just something that I've, I've seen. In every Filipino household I go to, the relationship with water in the house is so much different than what I'm used to in America. Okay, number nine is the level of difficulty to become successful. So a lot of the people that seem to have a lot of money in the Philippines, they usually seem to be people with relatives that work in other countries like Canada or Japan, Australia, the United States, Dubai, which is not something that I'm really used to. In America, it's pretty easy to make money pretty much wherever you live. It just seems like to me that the small town economy would be far less sustainable if not for money coming in from other countries because of uh, relatives working overseas. I don't know that there's enough money just naturally circulating in small towns, if that makes sense. And I could be totally wrong about that. It just seems like I'm constantly meeting people who have a husband who works in Dubai, or a son who works in Africa or Japan or something like that. Okay, so number 10, the final point on my list is the amount of attention that I receive here. So this is something that's definitely unique to a foreigner's perspective. In America, I don't get any special attention. Here though, I make friends everywhere I go. I get stared at all the time and people want to take pictures with me and I feel like I know a little bit what it's like to be famous now. It was actually kind of emotionally difficult for me, the amount of attention that I received here when I first got here because I'm such an introvert and I'm just not used to that and I like being alone, I like being outside and so that much attention made it difficult for me to actually find alone time and just quietness. For example, here in Dingalan, I would want to go on a walk when I first got here and I would go on a walk to the feeder port 
and before I knew it, I would have a crowd of kids following me around, or a group of tourists wants me to take pictures of them or with them, and it just felt really constricting because I felt like I could never just be by myself. I'm happy to say though that I feel like I've gotten used to it, and I think I've figured it out. It doesn't seem to bother me anymore, and I think I really embrace it now. It's just really cool to see so many smiles and so much happiness wherever I go, and not because of anything that I'm like doing on purpose. People are just really nice and happy to see me, and it's it makes it makes being here really fun. And again, this is a perspective that's unique to a foreigner. Um, Filipinos aren't going to be receiving this kind of attention in their own country, just like I don't receive this attention in my own country. This is also a point that makes the Philippines kind of a dangerous place for some people to come to because when people are giving you so much attention and some people are just basically throwing themselves at you, you have to be the kind of person who won't take advantage of people. You need to have some willpower and self-control and you need to be, I think, a mature person in order to handle that kind of attention. I also want to be careful not to make this point too generally. I'm not saying all Filipinos do this. I don't get attention from absolutely everyone. It's just some people, and most people are wonderful. Most people are a joy to be around. Some people don't understand boundaries too much, but it's, it's overall a positive experience. Well, there are 10 differences between life in America and life in the Philippines that I have observed so far after 10 months of being here. There are many more that I could mention, but this video would be super long, so I'm limiting it to 10 for now. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you agree or disagree with anything that I've said, please leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day or night, wherever you are in the world. And yeah, thanks again. Goodbye.